All right, so this is lecture two uh, of our, our series. Uh, so just as a recap of what we, what we looked at, uh, or remind you of what we covered uh, up until now, is we've looked at these different um, flavors of carbonyls, and we've, we've seen the, uh, uh, the ketone type, where R is an alkyl group. We've uh, looked at the ester, and we saw last of all in the class was the carboxylic acid. Um, these sort of uh, motifs. Now, um, we need to do uh, another one, which is the, the aldehyde. But before I move on with the aldehyde, I just want us to briefly kind of get a, a feel for the, the, flavors, uh, the flavors of the electrophile. Um, and up until now, we've looked at just a few simple examples. Uh, and because we're looking at alkylation of, uh, of enolates, the, the electrophiles so far have looked kind of like this. We've got an R group, which normally stands for an alkyl group, something that's on there, uh, and then a leaving group that's, uh, that's attached to it. And we've agreed that bromine is, is a good one to choose. Okay, so if we look at that, some of the ones that we've seen are uh, like, for instance, uh, benzyl bromide. This has been one I've used a couple of times. Uh, and we've also looked at allyl bromide. This has uh, come up a few times. Now, I just want you to realize and appreciate that these two, in a sense, are very similar. I mean, if I had to take this allyl bromide and just very lightly draw in some extra bonds over here, we see that this is like a phenyl ring. In fact, those two would be the same. So th there's a similarity between the two, uh, a leaving group, that is in the allylic position, all right, next to a double bond, is actually a very good leaving group and makes these leaving, these uh, reagents very, uh, very good electrophiles. Uh, there's something else that improves electrophiles, and that is if they're next door to a carbonyl group of some sort. So this can be a whole host of different things as R, but if this, this is a bromine next to a carbonyl, this is called an alpha halo. Uh, carbonyl, uh, and if you go and have a look in your textbook, try and look these up, uh, you'll see that these are very reactive uh, electrophiles, very, very reactive electrophiles, okay, excellent for these types of reactions that we've been doing. Uh, but there are other alkyl groups, for instance, we have our primary alkyl halides, which we look are something um, bromide or X or Chlorine, okay, it's a primary group, uh, and these are okay uh, as well. Um, not, not as good as uh, these ones, which are activated, um, but they're okay. And then we have the secondary ones. Uh, so um, two R groups, R1, R2, whatever, and a leaving group on it. Now, this is more sterically hindered, not as good. You don't see it this often, but they do come up uh, as electrophiles for alkylation of enolates. Um, but something that you won't see, actually we're going to see it, but you, you won't see it in, its, uh, in the, the standard form, is a tertiary uh, leaving group, something like this. This is a T-butyl bromide. It's because this is, it cannot undergo an SN2 reaction. All right, T-butyl groups do not undergo SN2 reactions, and so this does not work at all. So, so this is the um, flavors of, of, of the electrophile uh, up until now, um, but there, there is a little bit more that we're going to, to learn. And, and the reason I'm, I'm laying this out now is that I, I'm going to show you an electrophile that we can use but it's actually due for the next section in the next chapter. Uh, and that is the, the aldehyde group. You see, the, the aldehyde is also a very, very good electrophile. And so we come with a bit of a problem because if I uh, take this, uh, this, this aldehyde, and which is what, butanol, four carbons, and if I treat it with a base, and it's not important what the base is, but let's just for argument's sake say sodium hydroxide. Uh, we do it in a solvent. I will just choose ethanol. Could have been methanol or water. It's not 
too important from that point of view. Um, but uh, if I do that, the product that I get, um, and there may be a couple of products that come out of this, but this is one of the main products, looks like this. And we're going to deal with the mechanism of this at some point. For now, I think you should be able to recognize that some kind of self-condensation has occurred here. All right. There's the four. This part over there, all right, looks a lot like the starting material. Uh, and, of course, that looks like the starting material over there as well. It's the same number of carbons. So it's a type of dimerization. It's not a strict word to use here. Um, but the problem has arisen because the aldehyde is actually an excellent electrophile. And so when we treat it with a base, some of this will change into the enolate, like so. We have an equilibrium. Um, and of course, the equilibrium is very much in favor of the aldehyde, but this can then react with the aldehyde. We're going to deal with that in a few lectures' time. So for now, we don't need to, to know that. But what we do need to know is, going back to how we've been looking at this whole section, is if we've learned how to alkylate these flavors uh, of, of, of carbonyl compounds, how do we alkylate the aldehyde? And that's what I want to deal with now. There are actually three solutions to this problem. Um, and we're going to see how many we can deal with uh, now. Uh, the first solution is not the best, uh, but it, it is a solution. And that is to form the enamine. Now, you would have done this with uh, already. Uh, and so the enamine, for example, is we can take that same aldehyde that we had before, butanol, and let us treat it with a cyclic amine. All right, it's uh, uh, pyrrolidine, and we treat it with a little bit of acid. And you should have done the mechanism of this by now, and so you can work out that the product looks something like this. This is the ene amine, alkene plus the amine. You must be able to do this mechanism. Uh, but here's the important thing. Enamines, they look like an enol uh, in that you've got this nitrogen with a lone pair of electrons that can kick in, and, so, and this could kick out, and therefore uh, it can react with some sort of electrophile. But enamines are very, very unreactive, and so they do not react with the aldehyde component where they where they came from. I hope that makes sense. Okay, but then how is this a solution to the aldehyde problem? If they are so unreactive, then why would we use them? Well, that's why we don't use them that often. Uh, they are unreactive, but the only things that they're going to react with are the very reactive, let me just bring this back, uh, electrophiles that you've already seen. So benzyl bromide, allyl bromide, uh, and the alpha halo carbonyl compounds are pretty much all that the enamines are going to react with. Uh, and so let us just choose uh, an example. We'll take this one. Uh, and what we actually end up doing with these sorts of reactions is that we're actually having to heat them up together um, and so when this reacts, we can redraw our uh, electrophile here. So this reacts and kicks out the bromine, all right? Uh, and so we are left with, uh, if we follow this exactly, it's nitrogen, double bond, the, the, the new bond that's formed, goes to a carbon that has a double bond oxygen and a phenyl on it. Okay, so that was the new bond being formed. 
there's a positive charge on the nitrogen um, and as a last step also you must be able to do this mechanism please go and check it out come and speak to me if you're not sure if you want to check to make sure you can do this acid and some water and we hydrolyze off that and we end up with our product um, and again just just look at the most important uh, fact of this is that we have formed this bond which is next door to the carbonyl group and the carbonyl group was uh, we had a problem we could not do this reaction we could not take this treat it with a base and react it with that now some of the more astute of you will be saying but what if we can form the enolate of this so quickly that it doesn't have a chance to react with itself. In other words, what if we treat this with a very, very strong base? Could we get all the enolate to be formed? And so then there's no more aldehyde for it to react with. That sounds like a great idea. Um, however, people have found that in practice, that does not work very well. Okay. Then the next thing with all this chemistry is... We know that these are very, well, I've told you that they're very unreactive. So you need to have very reactive electrophiles. Um, what I haven't shown you is what the problem is if we use an unreactive electrophile. So, um, for instance, if we ended up with our enamine, uh, like so, uh, and now we treated it with an unreactive electrophile such as methyl iodide. Okay, it's a primary alkyl halide. It's actually a good electrophile. It fits over here. It's a very good electrophile. It's just not very activated. Um, the problem is, is that the enamine, whereas it can be nucleophilic at this carbon over here, it's also nucleophilic because of the lone pairs of electrons in the nitrogen. And so if you don't use very reactive uh, electrophiles, what happens is that you alkylate the nitrogen instead. And so what we left off with is a quaternary ammonium, CH3, salt like that. So it's positively charged. And this, once we treat with water and uh, acid, will just give us the alkylated amine, which is useless to us, and our starting material uh, will be regenerated again. All right, so hopefully um, this is just one way of overcoming the aldehyde problem. It's, it's not a completely useless method, and what I want to, I want to leave you with, uh, with something, uh, and that is uh, to look at this reaction over here. So uh, I'm going to take this uh, and in this case over here I'm going to use a, uh, a ketone, uh, not an aldehyde. I'm going to take this uh, ketone. I'm going to treat it with a secondary amine. All right. Um, I'm not going to choose pyrrolidine this time. This time I'm going to choose uh, this one over here, which is morpholine, put a hydrogen on there, uh, treated with morpholine, and I'm going to uh, with add some acid. And what happens is I get this uh, enamine being formed. Again, make sure you can do this mechanism. You just need to be able to do it of one thing, you can do it on all the rest. Uh, I then take this one and I'm going to treat it with an electrophile. Let's treat it with ethyl bromoacetate. It's the ethyl acetate of bromoacetic acid. Uh, and uh, the product I get is, and please, again, make sure you can do these mechanisms. Um, you're going to be asked this in your uh, weekly tests. I will be setting up an example of this. Um, okay, so there. Make sure I... Carbons, one, two, three, four. That's number four. And that's got two over there to oxygen. So one, two, three, four. New bond. And that's five, six next door to the carbonyl. So I've got all my carbons there. 
I've done that correctly. And on hydrolysis, we are going to get the product. You should be able to draw that out now. Um, but uh, I said this was actually a question. It wasn't just uh, me drawing out another, another example for you. Here's the question, and this is what you need to think about. When we form this enamine over here, all right, and we appreciated how it reacted, no problem over there. The question I have is why did we form this enamine? Why did we not form this enamine? Because this would then react and give us something very different. The answer is in your textbook, so go and have a look at that. That's what you need to, to look at. Um, and we'll, we'll continue to, to work through these uh, things in our lecture on uh, Wednesday. All right. Enjoy. Goodbye.